got this nice bird here, good spring gobbler. One of the most common problems we see with turkeys is damage. Damage both when you shoot the bird and then after the fact, after you shoot the bird when you don't take proper care of it. Now this bird is kicked around a little bit. He's got a little bit of damage, missing a couple of feathers, but all in all, he's a real trophy bird. So we want to mount this bird. We want to take care of him in the best way possible. When you shoot the bird, it's always a good idea not to run up, jump on them, step on them, tackle them, anything like that. You always see in the videos, guys will shoot the bird, run up there, jump right on them, lay on top of them. You end up knocking a lot of feathers out of them, doing more damage than just letting them flop. If you think you got a good solid hit on them, just let that bird lay there. As soon as you touch him, even if he seems like he's stone cold dead, he's flopping around, as soon as you touch him, he's just going to go ballistic. So your best bet is just let that bird kick around a little bit, let him flop some, flap his wings until he stops moving, and then you can go up and grab him. You always want to take good, good care of the bird. You don't want to handle him roughly or anything. One of the uh, things that you see people when they shoot a bird, everybody wants to flop them over their back and carry them over their shoulder. You actually do a lot of damage that way when you've got to carry them a long way. So I like to pick up the bird, hold him by his legs, always handle him like that. You never want to grab him by the head or the neck or anything. You end up pulling feathers out and, and uh, doing a lot of damage. So you always handle him by his legs. You're taking your pictures and everything, pick them up, lay them down gently on the ground. You don't want to drag them across the ground, drag them across the tailgate or anything. You'll pull feathers out that way. So, once you've got your bird, if you've got a long distance to carry them, one of the things I like to do is put them in a bag. I carry a couple of things in my vest here. I always have a trash bag. I carry a paper towel. What I like to do, take that paper towel, if he's bleeding from his mouth or anything, I put a little bit of paper towel down in his mouth, just pack it in there, just to absorb any blood or anything like that. I carry a baggie, just slide that head in there, that'll help prevent blood from getting all over the place. Now a good taxidermist is going to wash your turkey. He's going to can take a bird that's wet or dirty, bloody. He'll wash it up. It'll be you know just beautiful. Really clean up the feathers and everything. The exception to that is the tail. You don't want to get that tail dirty. You want to try and keep it from getting bloody or wet, anything like that. You want to keep it in good shape. So I always try to keep that tail clean. If I've got a long distance to carry the bird, I'll carry him in my vest. I carry this trash bag. It doesn't take up any space in my vest. I fold it up, slide it in my vest just in case we get a bird. Let's go ahead and slide him in there. Now, you never want to tie it or get the tail caught up in the, the bag even if you get it home it's in good shape a lot of guys will tie a string around it or tie that bag in a knot they'll end up tying the tail feathers in there once you mess up the tail quills it's really hard to get them back straight they can be steamed cleaned up but it's hard to get them back in perfect condition so you always want to be aware of that tail once I got the bird bag like that just gently pick them up, lay them in your vest. Buckle it up, make sure he's good and secure, you're ready to go. It's a lot better than slinging that bird over your shoulder or anything like that. If you uh, throw him over your shoulder, carry him any distance, you're going to end up catching breast feathers and twisting them up, pulling them out, you do a lot of damage that way.
getting bagged up and ready to go back to the truck. We had a good hunt this morning. We got a real nice bird. I'm gonna save him for a, a taxidermy mount. I showed you how to bag him up back where we shot him at. Now, I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on how to take care of the bird. I'm gonna show you how to handle the tail. This is especially helpful if you're traveling out of town, you got to travel a ways with it, put the bird in a cooler or anything like that. It's almost a necessity if you're out of state, if you're flying, you're going to be a couple of days before you can get it to your taxidermist. The uh, best way to do this is just to remove the tail altogether from the bird. Now, we do this on every turkey. This isn't an exception or anything for just birds that you're out of town on. We're going to remove the tail on every turkey that I mount. If you lay the bird on his back like this, the feathers naturally want to separate right underneath the tail. You have these long fluffy feathers here, and if you look down here, you've got the main tail coils right here. There will be a natural separation where they flop down. doesn't take any type of a fancy knife or anything. I just use a pen knife. I cut right along the tail coils, going back towards the body on the bird. There's going to be a bone right in the center. You just cut around that bone a little bit. Cut right down to the base of the quill. Now you can see where that folds right there at that vertebrae. That's going to be important here in a second. I carefully roll the bird over. On the back, once again, these back feathers that stand up when he struts, they're going to naturally separate right at the tail. Underneath, you don't have any feathers attached to the tail except for the main tail feathers. On the top, there's a secondary row of feathers. They don't want to come away very easily. They stick pretty tight to the tail. You want to leave those on the tail, pull the back feathers up. Right here, you'll see an oil gland. That oil gland we leave on the body skin. So if you cut right along this secondary row of tail feathers and leave that oil gland right on the body, cut down along the quills, right to the base of the tail. Now, you can see I've got that separated on both sides. There's no skin attaching that tail. Right where it flexes, right here. If you cut through the tail, or through the meat, you'll cut right in the joint in that vertebrae, right here. Just cut that. Tail comes off. It's in good shape. As I said, you've got a row of secondary feathers right on the top of the tail. On the underside of the tail, we don't have any. It's the main tail feathers and that's it. Now, this can be folded up. Now, if I were going to travel any distance or anything like that, I'd want to reinforce this tail. Good way to do that, just to keep it clean, take a piece of newspaper. Fold that tail up in the newspaper. That'll help keep it clean and dry. Take a couple of pieces of cardboard. Any old box will do. Just lay that tail right in there. couple of pieces of duct tape just to hold it secure. I 
That cardboard will reinforce the tail feathers, keep it clean. You want to keep this dry. If you got to pack this bird in a cooler or anything, you're going to be traveling a little distance. A lot of times in the spring it's hot weather. Cut the tail off, keep the tail separate. That way when you put this bird in the cooler, he'll fold up a lot better. All you got to do is flex these legs like this, bend them down, fold his head around. You can slide this right in the regular Coleman Igloo cooler, just the standard size one. Put a little bit of ice in there, keep them nice and cool. You'll be able to save your meat, keep the bird in good shape, keep that tail clean and dry, you'll get a nice mount. The better care you take of the bird in the field and on the way to the taxidermist, the better mount you're going to have.